Hi everyone, I'm Akhil Patel and I'm one of the directors of Property Share Market Economics. I'm joined by my good friend and co-director Philip Anderson, author yeah. of The Secret Life of Real Estate and Banking. Hi Akhil. So we've asked the Twitterverse for some questions related to the 18.6 year cycle. So we're just going to go through some of them uh, and give us, uh, sorry, give you our thoughts. Um, yeah, um, one thing I noted, uh, Akhil, um, and I hope people won't take this the wrong way, but I'm <laughs> getting more and more grumpy old man, I think. Um, I, I was able, from some of the questions that came in, I was, I was easily able to see some, uh, which, which question was from a PSE subscriber and which wasn't. Um, I, was, I, I, I was a little disappointed in a way. So, so um, some of the questions really, if you've done your homework on 18.6 and if you've done your homework on reading my book and your forthcoming book and if you've subscribed to PSE, you wouldn't need to ask those questions, uh, I'm telling you. So, so um, guys, get with it on this, you know. Um, um, take up our, uh, join our free list or sign up to Boom Bus Bulletin and even better, uh, Property Share Market Economics, because once you do, it just takes away all the, all the need for the questions. But anyway, yeah. that's what I... That's, that's, that's the punchline, by the way. We'll, <laughs> we'll go through some of the questions anyway. So let's start with an easy one. Do you think World War Three has commenced? Uh, Again, if you knew your history, and we did tell all of our subscribers in our 2022 roadmap that 2022 would be a tough year, yep. that we we're expecting lows in June and October, first week October, and here we are, a little bit after that now, and it looks looking good. Um, I detail some of this in my book, but I'll try to, I don't want to go on here, I don't want to waffle, but don't get on too long. You have a look at the 1960 election with John, which uh, J.F. Kennedy mm. won. He spent that practically that entire election tough talking about how tough he would be on the communists and on the Russians. And then right through 1960, 62, what was Khrushchev doing? He wanted an enemy. He was he was looking. He was trying to barrel the the, uh, the U.S. And then of course he set they set up a conflict with what happened in Cuba. Um, now history doesn't repeat exactly, but. What's different? Mm. I mean, you know, yeah. so now you've got the situation. Putin needs an enemy, right? That's you know, the way dictators stay in power. And it, it's been repeated almost exactly with what uh, um, she has been saying, uh, the, um, the, the Chinese uh, leader. Um, he, in the communist um, sessions that are taking place at the moment to re-elect him, as the, to give him a third session, um, he's been rallying against the U.S. and says he has to take Taiwan because the U.S. is, uh, is the enemy. Mm. I mean, I, I find this a farce. Uh, mm. Really, I do. Mm. So I suggest to people, um, get off your backside, study some history, and you will see just how, just how much bullshit the politicians are levying at you. Uh, they, are, they are always giving you something to worry about. Yep. And, and uh, you know, I just, just get that's on how with they, it. That's how they stay in power. Uh, yeah, and, and of I course, think... the other thing, sorry, I kill the other exactly. thing, which is also very important, whilst all that's going on, whilst we're worrying about these things and while we're getting to World War Three and everything else, nothing can change. Mm. True. You see, so status quo. It's status quo, and that's yeah, all yeah. they're after. Like, it's, I find it a farce. Yeah, no, I think we should point out that, you know, for us, the 60-year cycle is also very important yes, in markets, yeah. In, yeah. in events and so on. Yeah. It's related to commodities and so on. Yeah. But back to the 18.6 year cycle, um, I'm just going to go through some of these questions. So one of them is, how much higher can things really go in terms of land values? The great Fred Harrison, uh, is entirely true, he is great, still thinks there are three years worth of growth left. But I'm really struggling to see how this can, uh, how this can keep going. And this is from Jatin Shah. Um, it's asking the wrong question. In a sense, it's not about it's not about land values; it's about affordability. And you will see once things settle down, uh, the banks worldwide are going to have higher profits because of the higher interest rates. I mean, you can see it. You yeah. go into a bank and you have a look now at what banks will be getting from new mortgages, say four percent, five percent, depending on where you are. Yeah. And my my funds in an HSBC at the moment, and some of the other banks at zero point one percent, right? <laughs> They're not very quick to you, pass you on bank. those savings, so <laughs> you might get two percent um, now. Yeah, so it's anyway, but it, but it's yeah. adjusting, right? Yeah. So, so um, it's not about 
it's not about um, land values or land prices, it's about affordability. Yeah. So banks, you're going to see now, I think, a bit of creativity. The banks will now yeah, come yeah. up with all sorts of things, be extended mortgages, yeah. uh, creative ways in which exactly. to create credit. Help with deposits, yeah. higher loan to values, yeah. all that sort of thing, all the things that you see each, each cycle. Yes. All right. And so one thing and we yeah, should mention too, which didn't pass with um, the UK government, but tax cuts. Yeah, true. They'll yeah. come up eventually. Energy price caps, yeah, anything, anything to all, help. Yeah. Yes, anything. Yeah, mm. yeah. Easy. All right. Uh, things are very much on track and we've been very consistent about that despite all the emotional turmoil we've had this year. Mm. Um, is there anything, though, that might change our mind about the real estate cycle ending? And this is a Sun Bear Park um, ending that, in, in the next six to 12 months. That's a good question. Um, do you want to have a go? At, it's a good question because... Um, you should always, you've always got to know what you don't know. And you can't just keep on saying things for the sake of mm. history and everything else. There could be um, game changes. You, want to, you got any thoughts on Um Well, to be honest, I think, I've, and I've said this also to many of our subscribers, if the cycle doesn't play out, it's actually going to be even bigger and even longer uh, than we think. So I'm, I, mm. I, that's sort of the way that I think things will um change and that's partly because governments are now so active in terms of bailing things out and pump flooding the market with money and liquidity uh that, that you know the first sign of trouble in the future and you know the next, oh, when things settle down i i certainly see that being a possibility i don't think it's a forecast at the moment but that's if things go off track that would be it in terms of it ending early i mean of course if you know the war in ukraine escalates and it's actually a nuclear war, and yeah, yeah. You know, the US gets involved. Then obviously all bets are off. Um, I don't, for the reasons you set out, I don't see that being the case. I think you know some of the conflict is a bit manufactured, and what's not that it's difficult for people in Ukraine. Of course, what's happening at the moment is completely normal. Yeah. It's just crap politicians yeah. wanting enemies so that they can stay in power and scare their constituents, and nothing changes. Yeah, I, yeah. I suppose if. Um, for whatever reason, we needed interest rates at very high levels for quite a prolonged period, and then people's sort of fixed rate mortgages ended and, and that sort of thing. Then yes, that would cause a problem in the in the real estate market. But again, for, for reasons I've set out to subscribers, I'm not sure that's mm. uh, the case actually. Mm. Um, and I, I suspect now that when things calm down, actually, rate rises will either stop or, or, or um, wouldn't surprise you know, me if we get yeah, a, if we get, get if we get a that, reduction. Yeah. yeah. Um, now, uh, we've got a few quite interesting ones. Um, so what's your view on the current dollar strength? This is sort of linked to interest rates and so on. And what do you expect to happen going forward? Because um, the dollar, and just, just by way of context, dollar being this strong at this point in the cycle is a bit unusual. Yeah, and I think it's partly linked to uh, you know, the Ukraine situation. Yeah, I think there's a change coming, but uh, we'll have to see. We, we discuss it more for subscribers, really, than anybody else. Yeah, I just make one broad point is that on the whole, you get um, dollar trending downwards for at least the last few years of the cycle. So normally it's yeah. a bit like it's a bit like 1985, actually. So the US dollar was very strong in 1985, partly because of the interest rate rises at the start of the decade. Uh, and then there was some sort of engineering between the top economies in the so. world. Yeah. yeah. So so you got dollar weakness. And I think you can kind of see something like that starting to to play out, you saw the IMF World Bank meetings, people talking about the strong dollar, so you might see some mm. reversal of that. All right, here's an interesting question. What sectors are you most interested in currently and in 2023? Uh, well, again, like I said uh, a little bit before, um, you don't... See, if, if I answer that question, uh, I'm just giving another set of opinions. The, the market... The market tells you what sectors to be watching for and what to go for, um, and it tells you by watching the new highs list. Okay, we deal with that with subscribers. So if that if, if that was a subscriber, you ought to know better. <laughs> if it's not a subscriber, subscribe. Become a subscriber. Become, absolutely, because uh, we teach you how to read a chart. We teach you what the market's looking at to what to get into next. It's it, it's just not an opinion, and you don't want our opinions on that. Do you want to see what the market's doing? So WD Gann says, what's the new highs list? It's pretty simple. Brilliant. Okay, and that was a question from Fab. Sorry, I didn't read out his name. 
This is a, hopefully a short answer here from a question from Rush. A lot of chatter about a melt-up scenario, followed by a global bust next year with an 80% crash in equities. Do you, give, do you guys give this scenario any merit? I think maybe probably <laughs> the answer is obvious based on what yeah, we've already said. Yeah, I think so. I think so. Akhil, I'm going to have to stop getting grumpy, I think. I shouldn't, <laughs> I shouldn't, I shouldn't lecture and point my finger, but, but yeah. anyway. So, yeah. no, we don't give that scenario any credence. It's just not consistent with where we are in the cycle. I don't think so, no. It, look, again, um, it does go back to a nuclear option and stuff, right? That we, we'd be looking at something, but uh, I think the market would tell us. We'd have to see. We could point out, though, that um, if the October lows broke substantially and the market kept going downwards, that would indicate there's, there's something amiss, perhaps, but... Mm. Let's see. Yeah, okay. Uh, this is a question from Blake. Where are the trillions of dollars created worldwide sitting? Not all in property as yet. I checked my couch, but only found sadly $1.25 of it. <laughs> yeah, I checked my, my, <laughs> I checked I my check bank balance. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, um, there's a lot of money in the US in bank accounts. It's something like 10 trillion. I yeah, mean, it's higher than you think. Uh, there's a lot of cash around. People have been saving. Um, It'll come out of the woodwork, but remember, it's not what's in the savings accounts that's important. It's what the banks create. Well, I mean, this is, and, and, and interestingly, I mean, while banks don't lend people's savings out, if they have more savings, they are able to create more credit. Um, people did exit the pandemic mm. with record high mm. savings. Mm. I think that's one of the reasons why inflation has been so persistent is because we all exited the pandemic wanting to spend money. Mm not having the opportunity to do it in all the ways we wanted to. And so we're quite price insensitive. So we yeah, yeah. sort of paid more for our coffees and our travel and our beers and all the rest of the yeah. things that we've been spending money on. Yeah. Um, all right, final couple of questions. Um, we have, uh, we've talked a bit about commodities. This is a question from Luke. Um, the second half of the real estate cycle and the Kondratiev wave lining up to peak later this decade, do you see lithium as the booming commodity opportunity for this cycle? in the same way that iron ore was between 2002 and 2007? Well, the market's telling us that already, isn't it? I mean, the lithium stocks are up, the market was going down. Yeah, okay. Um, this is from Black of Saka Raman. Will we also be including crypto in the cycle roadmap analysis, considering that crypto has some similarity to the rise of the internet in the 2000s? That's yours. <laughs> um, well, the reason that we don't, and I think this is quite important, is that it's much easier to forecast cycles when you've got a lot of historic data. And crypto, yeah. there's just simply not the data. Secondly, um, not many cryptocurrencies are traded in volumes that actually make price sort of reasonable. Uh, there's a lot of, you know, quite thinly traded stuff. Um, I'm also not sure that we've really yet found the use for crypto that would match what the internet was doing in the late 90s and the 2000s. I know some crypto evangelists might disagree, but... Uh, it's a lot of speculation at the moment. You're starting to see a bit of that in, in sort of finance, in real estate, in other places. But I think when it's really applied to business processes, that's when you would see the real, the real boom in, 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 in the crypto space. We, we, we did a, we did a, I did a session with um, Jason. Yeah. Uh, what was it? Pizzino. Earlier this year. Um, yeah. Um, we'll put a link up. We'll, 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 tweet, we'll tweet the link. So okay. that's, a, that's, a fan, that's a fabulous hour of discussion on the yeah. whole crypto thing. I think crypto people, if you haven't seen it already, you yeah. get a lot out of that. Remind me to tweet it. Yeah, okay. And, and one thing we would say about crypto is, given that it has been a vehicle for speculation in the last few years, of course, speculation ultimately gets drawn into the real estate market. So when you start to see crypto opportunities linked to real estate in the next couple of years, you know that you know we're starting to get quite close to the peak of the cycle. Uh, all right. Um, I think we can draw it to an end there, except to ask, when will we release the 2023 roadmap? And this is another question from Fabs. Yeah, um, uh, end of the year, right? It comes out. Yeah, okay. so for PSE subscribers, we, we uh, post it right at the end of the year or at the start of uh, next year. Um, and as we've talked about, it will be our standard roadmap, which is the forecast for the year. But this time we're gonna do something a bit different. We're gonna have a forward look at the next three years. So not only will you have the 2023 roadmap, but also uh, outline forecast for the years 2024 to 2026, which I think is probably fairly unique amongst publications that people are putting out there. Yeah, that'll help us with our, with the 10 year repeat pattern Dow Jones thing we did too, looking out 
um, looking out which subscribers get as well. So yeah, yeah, I'm interested. We've still got to do that. A lot of work. A lot of work. All right. Well, thanks a lot, Phil, uh, and thank you very much for your questions. Yeah, we appreciate it. We yeah, appreciate really, it. really appreciate your engagement. Um, and if you wanted to find out more and you're not already a subscriber, please visit our homepage. You can either sign up for our free Property Cycle Investor newsletter or you can become a member either to the Boom Bust Bulletin or a full Property Share Market Economics member. Hope to see you soon. Thanks for watching. Want to know more? Join our Property Cycle Investor newsletter. You'll get exclusive access to our new uploads on YouTube. Click here to watch our other videos.